who, who's the MC of this session? MC. <laughs> we can give it a whirl. Um, and do you want to talk a bit about what you're teaching uh, next spring? And, uh, so yeah, and, and I did, uh, we talked a little bit about one course that, that I uh, that so so um, the course that I the course that I put together for for uh, for, for the next spring is called Benjamin Franklin. And um, so the idea, the, the, the course is actually about, uh, um, maybe not, a, I don't know if you all knew that Benjamin Franklin spent probably 15 years in London, um, really more than that, because he was, he was uh, he, when he was a very young man, he went over and worked for probably two years or so in print shops in London. That's where he learned, how to, he learned his trade. Well, this is where he polished his trade in printing. He learned it in America, but he polished it in London. But it's more than just Benjamin Franklin. I think it's really an introduction to London in the 18th century, but London in the British Empire and the development of the first British Empire. So uh, Benjamin Franklin actually was a loyal citizen of the British Empire, a subject of the British Empire. He was a subject of the king. He was, he was a loyal subject of the king. He did what most Britons did in the 18th century and tried to work his way up in the ranks, find himself a patron, and just rise in society. And he did. He rose to. Uh, he rose to become. Well, he rose not just to become one of the leading men in London, uh, in America, but he also rose to be one of the leading men. Of, uh, wait, now I'll start over again. <laughs> <laughs> I won't start entirely over, but I, I'm talking a little bit about. Um, so I'm going to London in the spring, um, spring 24, and maybe you all saw that the course that I'm teaching is Benjamin Franklin in London. So I'm talking a little bit about Benjamin Franklin. So, and why, why, why that, and what, what's you know, um, what, what can we learn beyond just Benjamin Franklin? It's not just the story about Benjamin Franklin. Um, it's really a story more about America and. And England in the 18th century, and what was happening in England in the 18th century, and how Benjamin Franklin took a, really probably one of the most, probably one of the shrewdest, um, probably one of the shrewdest colonists um, to to rise in that period, and certainly to understand how a person got ahead in that society at that time as a colonist. And he really thought, I think he really did. He worked. He worked. To be um, to, to recognize, he was a member of the Royal Society. He was recognized all over the Western world for his achievements in um, electricity, and uh, and uh, he really, I would say, if you asked him in 1756, what did he think he'd do, and how did he think he'd end up living out the rest of his life, and I think he would have said, well. What I really plan on doing is living in London the rest of my life, and I, and I actually plan to be um, one of the one of the one of the regular courtiers of London. I, I just want this is where I want to be. Uh, London is where I want to be. Top of British society, or near the top, not that the top, but near the top of British society is where I want to be. But what he found out um, when he got to London is uh, that here, all these years, he'd be he'd been telling them, "I'm English, I'm English, I'm British, I'm British," and they turned around to him and they said. No, you're not. And then he said, "Okay, I'm not. I'm American." And he made an about face, probably in the you know, later 1760s, and probably became one of the most ardent advocates of American independence. And so, one of the things we're going to see is how that process unfolded, and how the empire gave him all these opportunities to become, as a as a younger son of a of a can of a candle maker, um, how the opportunity, how the how the society gave the English all the all the uh, culture and uh, production of England in the 18th century gave him the opportunity to start there and get to a position as one of the leading figures, really even before the American Revolution, one of the leading figures in. Europe, um, and uh, and then how events then in London um, turned him to become more of a uh, well to become one of the leading um, 
leading lights for uh, revolution and independence. You know, and so I think it's exciting, and I think actually as I put it together, I also realize this is going to be a great introduction to London. Um, I don't know if we'll get to do everything that I've planned out, but I have every week planned where we're going to, <laughs> right now, I have every week planned where we're going to go to something different. Do you want to talk about some of the places that you're going to? And, uh... So, sure. Um, I mean, we're going to start out, we're, the, first, the first week we're going to start out uh, on the London Eye. We're just going to get on the London Eye, we're going to get up. I hope, I hope what we're going to do is have a map of, of contemporary London. Actually, there is a map on the Eye, you can mm -hmm. just kind of look and they'll tell you about how to find stuff. But, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll have another map of 18th century London. We can just look and see what would Benjamin Franklin, you wouldn't have been able to get on the Eye. But, <laughs> <laughs> but what would Benjamin Franklin, if he, if he had, could have gotten to the top of, of someplace high, like maybe maybe even St. Paul's, if he could have climbed, who knows, maybe he did, I don't know. But uh, if he could have climbed somewhere, what would he have seen? What would London have looked like for him? And so that's what we'll do the first week. But we'll, we'll probably visit Parliament, I think, I hope we'll visit Parliament. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll visit, um, we'll, hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm all right, welcome. So we'll probably visit, um, uh, we'll visit, definitely visit Greenwich. Uh, Greenwich is, um, uh, if you, when you watch, uh, you have seen Pirates of the Caribbean, right? So there's, it's the second one. Do you remember seeing the room with the beautiful paintings on the ceiling? Those people were, that, we're gonna visit that room. We're gonna see that place. Because that was the, um, the, the hospital, the Navy hospital. Um, so it was created, it was, commissioned by uh, Queen Mary, of William and Mary fame, um, for, for wounded sailors. And, uh, and so it, it's, it's a big, beautiful um, um, old campus, really. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll, we'll visit that, but also uh, Greenwich is, you've heard of Greenwich Mean Time, so it's all, it all starts there. So we'll go up and see the observatory as well, um, and uh, it's a, it's very important for I would say for scientific discovery and investigation in the 18th century. So we'll do that. We'll have to ride the I think we'll do the water taxi probably. Um, I think that's what we're going to do. We'll do the water taxi. So we'll ride down the Thames and you'll be able to see that. We'll we'll visit. Um, We'll probably visit a couple of the great houses where Benjamin Franklin would have had friends. We'll visit lots of museums. We'll visit the, the, uh, the National Library. We'll visit the uh, London Museum. We'll visit, um, we'll visit the dock, uh, the docks. The, what do they call it? The dock? It's just the docks. Uh, the docklands, docklands, yeah. It's, we'll visit the docklands where the, where the docklands are actually, I think these days they're, um, they're really nice condos and. Yeah, so it's Canary Wharf, which is the financial district. So, so it's, it's all high rise. And it's really, I mean, yeah, it's not anything like it would have been, but there'll be a muse there's a museum there that we can we can visit that has uh, a lot of that slave trade, or uh, the slave trade, which was of course uh, really critical at that period. I don't know if you've ever watched Wilberforce, but they in in that movie they have in they have a, a they have um, oh some high society. Um, Lords and ladies uh, riding in a in a, in a boat um, past the slave ships and holding their noses because um, slave ships smelled like cattle cars, the worse than cattle cars, um, and you could smell. The, the story is that the story is that in New York, when a slave ship would come into the harbor, people up in the hills knew that it was there because they could smell it, and so. So, uh, in any case, we'll we'll learn a little bit about about uh, the importance of the slave trade um, in the, in 18th century London. And uh, so, I, if we can, we'll go. We'll see if we can't go up to uh, Staffordshire yeah. uh, to see if we can to, to visit where the pottery is made. Uh, there's a there's a museum of Wedgwood a museum of Wedgwood of China up there. Um, but that's very important. The reason we're going to do that part of it is part of it because it's beautiful. But part of it is because it's very important in the 18th century. Um, the, the Staffordshire pottery uh, went all over the world. Actually, um, it, was a, it was a staple of English um, of English production, English manufacturing in the 18th century. 
So, um, but it's also going to be a lot of fun to go. So, yeah, no, it'd be brilliant. And that class uh, will count for um, humanities credit and potentially social, social science. science credit. We'll, we'll, yeah, uh, it, it should be easy to get the social science mm -hmm. credit for that too. I'm going to do some of those interest class and other things. Yeah. And bring maps, and we're going to do uh, when we go places, we're going to map it out and, um, mm -hmm. and see where we're going. And, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the interaction of geography and, uh, and environment and mm -hmm. history as well. So, and so we'll have uh, Dean Hall's course. Um, we also have a, a couple of staples that we do every semester. So, um, SOA 200 Arts and Society will be taught by. Uh, British adjuncts and we'll explore um, mainly theatre, music and art. We're going to places like the Royal Albert Hall, uh, different concerts, theatre productions at the Globe, so seeing Shakespearean kind of things. Um, biblical foundations you can also take in London with our British adjuncts. Um, I teach British heritage and culture um, which qualifies for humanities and social science credit. It's a course where we explore um, how British identity is formed, uh, maintained, and sadly now it's falling apart. Um, with Scotland won its independence, and who knows what will happen in the next uh, few years. Um, there's a historian called Linda Coley who talks about how British identity was kind of forged through war, empire, and Protestantism. And um, so what that means is that we'll explore kind of other key narratives which kind of wedge and uh, forge these people together. So. Uh, we'll look at the World Wars, so we're going to place like the Imperial War Museum, uh, the Churchill War Rooms, um, go look at kind of where London was bombed and explore the streets. Um, we'll also look at how modern empire, uh, how, sorry, how empire uh, impacts modern Britain, because much of the city which we'll be exploring uh, with Dean Hall was built on the backs of uh, the money that was produced by empire. So how does that still kind of affect Britain today? So one thing we'll explore is and multicultural Britain, so how did Britain become such a diverse place? So there's roughly, gosh, I get this wrong way every time, there's over 200 nationalities and over 300 languages spoken in London alone. Uh, so exploring some of that diversity. Um, we'll look at royalty, so why are we so crazy about the royal family? Who knows what we'll be like with uh, King Charles III. Um, so we'll go to uh, Royal London walking tours. Um, We'll explore how sport plays a role uh, in modern Britain. So we're going to football matches, cricket matches, if the weather is good enough. We played cricket in the park with Paisley when she was over last summer. So seeing how that kind of impacts Britain. Um, the class that I do on uh, James Bond and Britishness. So how is uh, Britishness represented in the world uh, through culture? Um, and then we look at how Britishness is falling apart. So Scotland won its independence, the B word Brexit, which still ruins my life <laughs> every day. Um, so those courses are going on. So the way it works is that um, we also have an internship course, which um, Dean Hall will be teaching uh, next spring, which focuses on, focuses on exploring your vocation. So the worst question I always ask students is, uh, what are your plans when you graduate? Because, I mean, I still don't even know. Um, so this course will be designed upon exploring your talents, your skill set, um, and what really your vocation and calling is in life. So uh, exploring that together in small groups. Um, so it'd be a great way of exploring your own journey um, when you're in London. So everyone has, is signed up for the internship course, which uh, is required because um, you need to get the credit, the academic credit for that internship. You don't get the credit for just going to work. And um, so that's six credits. Uh, and then you have the option of signing up for an additional two or three courses. So whether that's both of our courses or whether you plan to do SOA in London or Biblical Foundations. Um, one thing that I would say is that SOA and our courses will be kind of heavily focused on uh, spending as much time out and about Biblical Foundations because of the requirements by the uh, department here tends to be kind of more similar to what you would do on campus. There are site visits, uh, but it's more in the classroom rather than uh, kind of ex experiential learning. So there'll be loads of visits in, in all the classes, all the other classes as well. Um, the classes tend to be three to four hours long in, in one kind of block. And um, so typically it's spending a little time in the classroom and then going out and about, either going to a museum, performance, that kind of thing. Um, we are actually going to be, I'm not sure if all of you are aware, uh, we currently use a third party to supply our internships to students, uh, an organisation called CAFA. 
from this fall that's actually coming in-house. Um, so we'll be placing students in uh, different fields of interest. So um, Jennifer uh, will provide you with the placement guide and kind of a list of all the different fields uh, that you can possibly work in. I mean, London's an amazing like, centre of business in whatever industry. So uh, we'll work with you to kind of tailor your placement as best as possible. So again, you can get that great experience while you're, while you're there. Paisley worked uh, last summer, so it typically is 20 hours a week uh, over 12 weeks for the spring. So um, on the days that you're not in classes, um, you'll have two and a half days to work and, and gain that experience. Um, in terms of other things that kind of happen in the programme, so once you arrive in London, uh, we'll do like a week long orientation to kind of help you hit the ground running as quickly as possible. Um, and then every Wednesday we do a different community event. So those range from playing cricket in the park. Um, what else we do? We're going to a, a, a we just came back from a Great British Bake Off experience, which is like the tent and all that sort of stuff. I did not read the instructions; it didn't go that far. Um, so yeah, we go to places like that. Uh, interactive darts, going to see football matches. So. Um, Kind of to provide some context, I, I previously worked at Boston University and another American university in London and kind of what sets the Daniel House apart is the sense of community and lifelong friendships. I'm meeting with Paisley's uh, old group this, afternoon, uh, this evening rather. Um, I met with Paul 21 uh, the other day and they all remain the best of friends. So looking across the classroom here, even if you don't know anyone, those kind of friendships that are built are so incredibly special. Um, we also go on a weekend excursion to Wales uh, in the semester. Uh, it's like an outdoor activity. Um, again, Paisley went, she can give you a, a testimony. Uh, so there's activities that range from uh, surfing, kayaking, uh, co steering, which is jumping off varying degrees of heights, uh, cliff edges into the sea, um, hiking, there's loads of sheep and cows, which Someone was chasing a sheep the other week, which I wasn't prepared for. Um, <laughs> if that's not your thing, you can go to castles and also go to cathedrals. Um, and it's in the middle of nowhere in Wales, so it's completely picturesque and it's uh, really kind of like a stunning place to, to visit while you're there. Um, I should have provided some context. So I'm the director of UK Programs and Operations, so I live on site with my wife and our Cocker Spaniel, Larry. Um, so it really will become like a home away from home. Uh, Dean Hall is, will also be living on, on site with his wife. Um, so we'll be there to support you throughout the whole um, experience uh, while you're in London as well. So um, whatever problems you may encounter while you are there for 15, 16 weeks, we'll be there to kind of help you through those things. And of course, London being where it's at. Does anyone have friends there now? Okay, Pacey does. Um, and you also as well. It's obviously a great place to go off and venture into the continent. Uh, and explore different countries while you're there. Uh, spring break falls at exactly the same time as it does on campus, so you have about 10 days to cover as much ground uh, as you'd like, uh, and depending on your stamina and obviously what budget that you have, um, most weekends are free to travel as well, so uh, use London as your launching pad to explore the whole of Europe as well. Uh, but there are some amazing things in London as well, so you don't have to travel uh, every weekend. Most things. Does anything you want to pay me as a as a veteran? Um, I can't think. There's just so much to do. Like obviously the semester is different. I did the summer program, so I was there from I left May thirty first, um, got there June first, and then I left on July fifteenth. So I was there for Fourth of July, which we make fun of Tom about all the time. Um, but it was one of the best time frames to go. But I really, really loved like my friends' experiences with the semester. So I think the semester is such a crucial part of your Stanford experience um, because you're seeing so many different realms of London that you can't see them within half. Um, and the classes that are offered are so um, crucial and so important. Um, there's so much free time that it's almost, that's your problem is there's so much to do. Um, and you have to balance school life, but also like balancing living in London and like contacting friends and the time difference. Um, and that was such a big learning curve that I had and I'm so grateful that I got to do it. Um, because I could have done it just staying at Sanford. Mm -hmm. um, but there's just so much to do, and we call Tom like our in house father. Like, he was truly like just such a great person for us um, and such a good role model, and he was always there for us whenever we needed it. Um, so, if you're ever hesitant about, like, I don't know, like, am I going to feel safe there? Am I like not going to like build community? Like, Tom fosters that community so well. 
um, and the people there are just like they're so great. So I just think it's something that you have to take as like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So you must be a baby. Mm. Maybe not. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I also love Larry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my dog's by far the most popular um, person there. Um, again, it will be by, by far the most amazing semester experience of, of your career, of your career, of your life. Um, and it has such a specialness uh, to it. It will also be the most challenging as well. Um, you'll be away from your normal su uh, support structures. Uh, you'll be trying to juggle this. I would say a three-legged stool, but there's so much else going on. You've got classes, you've got internships, the temptation to go off and see absolutely everything. So you'll be juggling a lot, so you'll learn and probably develop more than any other semester as well. But again, uh, we'll both be there to kind of help and support you throughout that journey. So um, yeah, whatever we can do to answer any questions before uh, you apply um, or come over, hopefully you'll all apply, right? Um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll do anything to kind of help you out. Um, does anyone, oh, do you have a step sync shirt, right? Oh, yeah. We, we, we stream step sync, so don't think that you're missing out um, on that at all. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, so for the internship, I know it's six credits, but what um, does that, like, does it count for this, like, the humanities, or how does that work? Do you know? What does that class I don't know that it does. Um, I think I think it, comes, it, it all depends on what your major is. So some majors yeah. require those internship credits. Mm -hmm. If not, it would go down as an elective. I'm assuming. Right? That's what I yeah, yeah. That's what I assume. And you can talk with your advisor about that for your particular major and situation to know if if it's a required internship and if it could count. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good question. Any other questions? I know you talked a little bit about like um, the law classes and what you do on Wednesdays and throughout the week, but what is like a day in the life or week in the life look like? Like, almost scheduled. Like, how do you, where yeah. do the classes yeah. go? Where does the internship go? Um, so the internship class is normally on a Monday morning. Um, and then there's not usually a class on Monday afternoon. So an internship class actually only meets every other week. So as soon as you get out of that class, most people tend to go to their internship and do half the day. So get four or five hours of work in. Tuesday tends to be class all day. So uh, the schedule's not set, set. So say, for example, it's both of our classes in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, if you're not in those classes, you would have that day free to do your internship. Um, Wednesdays normally completely free to get internship hours. Thursdays are full day of classes, which is typically SOA in the morning, uh, biblical foundations in the afternoon, uh, and then Friday is completely free to do your internship. So it all depends on what your schedule is. If you don't have classes on Monday and Tuesday, you can get your hours in then and have that Friday completely free. So it all depends kind of what you sign up for. Um, most students don't tend to work a full day on Friday. They tend to just work on a Friday morning and then either just finish for the week and then go off and explore London or the UK or go off into Europe. So um, it's a pretty action-packed week, um, a bit like Paisley said, just what she just did. Um, <laughs> there's still plenty of time to go off and explore. And but I should probably explain a bit more. Where the house is, it's like the most amazing part of London. If you think of London like concentric circles, we're just slap bang like bullseye in the middle of London. But it's it's ridiculous where we are. Um, so few of the study abroad programs kind of have what Sanford has in terms of real estate. Like you'll go to work and they'll say, where do you live? And you'll say South Kensington and they won't believe you. Um, most people are commuting like an hour into London for work. Um, if you uh, the deal you get in terms of living in that part of town is, is, is amazing. So, and the facility had a three million dollar renovation several years ago. So, all the facilities at the house are great. Um, and you're only like, so have you uh, oh, watched Paddington Bear the movie? Come on, and <laughs> um, he goes into the Natural History Museum at one point. So, that's like a 10 minute walk from the house. Uh, Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens, um, where Prince William and Kate Middleton live, uh, or lived, have just moved. That's a 10 minute walk from the house. So, all these amazing kind of things on your doorstep. Places like Piccadilly are about two miles away, so about 10 15 minutes on the tube, uh, or if you walk about half an hour. So, um, it's amazing. Yeah, I can't speak hardly enough of it. Any, any other questions? Is it 
that's, that, that's a misconception. Um, I guess it was snowing the day before I left. Um, it doesn't rain any, anywhere nearly uh, as much. Um, it'll rain for like a brief period and then it will dry up. It'll be, it'll be quite cold and um, when you arrive in, in, in January, so that's the same everywhere. And it'll be quite dark. But the great thing about spring, by the way, April, the days are so long because we're, our latitude is much higher. Um, and it should be very warm as well by the end of the semester. So it gradually gets brighter and brighter in the way that it comes through. But because we're so close to the continent, there are so many places to see there that are warmer, shall we say. So as long as you bring a rain jacket and a brolly, you'll be, you'll be good. Any other questions? This is a silly question, but what about fees? What is your oh, yeah, good question. Um, so in your program fee, uh, you pay like a board fee. So three times a semester, you get like a it's nine hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you'll get nine hundred dollars to um, use however you like. So the house in the basement, the house has a breakfast room, uh, and then also sorry, I should have brought pictures, uh, and also a kitchen which is fully equipped with everything you would need to make uh, meals. So some students cook together uh, and like group share that, uh, some cook alone. I'll be frank, there's, there was one guy that I, an alumni that I met the other day who didn't enter the kitchen one point. He just went and saw Colonel Sanders and someone else every day. <laughs> so it varies greatly, but most people use the kitchen uh, to cook. Um, there are also so many options on your doorstep as well, delivery apps, all that kind of stuff. So it's very much a mixed bag. In terms of what we provide food-wise, um, when you arrive, like breakfast items are there for the, for the first week. Um, and then throughout the semester, we provide tea, coffee, milk, uh, and most importantly, biscuits of the English kind, um, which I just bumped into a spring, no, 422 alumni uh, out in the, on campus. She asked me if I brought uh, chocolate digesters with me, <laughs> biscuits, which I did not. So they're a big favorite, but yes, it's very much kind of a focus on uh, independence there's no cap on the bread, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, but depending on your outlook. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, brilliant. Well, you know where to find us. Uh, yeah, Atlanta is downstairs. And I'm several thousand miles away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm just T. Crosby uh, at sanford.edu. Jennifer has my. Information, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, whatever pops up before and uh, between now and then, please don't hesitate to get in touch and hopefully we'll see you next spring. Yeah.